Hello, everyone. Welcome to this video about securing your crypto wallet. We all have been joining um, so many different projects. We all have been joining, you know, the journey to become financially free, especially on the crypto market. Um, but many of us fail to start with the basics, like understanding what crypto is understanding what the blockchain is understanding you know basic things you should make sure you know you should take care of in order to ensure you don't you know open your door to people just to come and take your uh, crypto away so in this video i would like to talk about how to secure your crypto wallet in order to prevent being hacked my name is pascal Defo. And um, I, I'll try to make it not too long. So if you follow these steps, I can assure you that you will put you know, yourself in a better position to, um, you know, to secure your wallet and to secure your wealth. So countless are now the victims of cryptographic account or wallet hacking. So be aware that hackers are even more diligent and determined than most investors. And failure to take the time to better understand the basics will cost you your hard-earned crypto wealth. Let me repeat this. So while you choose not to take the time to learn the basics so that you don't get hacked, you don't get your crypto stolen, hackers spend hours in learning how they're going to hack your account. And then they become expert at it. And if you just give them a free pass on your highway or the highway to your account in wallet, then guess what's going to happen? You're going to get hacked. This happens to even the best of us. <clears throat> and I'm not even talking about people like you and me. I'm talking about billion dollars company. We hear it all the time. Uh, Coinbase has been hacked. They lost like, uh, you know, millions of dollars. Uh, this sort of platform has been hacked and so on. So be warned. What I would call vulnerability number one is basically where it all starts. Because each time you create a wallet, you are provided with a mnemonic phrase. A mnemonic phrase is basically a set of 12 words, secret words. They meant to be secret. Only you should know them. So these are 12 secret words. They either get, you know, called a mnemonic phrase on some platform or seed phrase on some other platform. Each time you create a crypto wallet, you get them. So they basically will help you in case you lose your electronic device to basically recreate or duplicate or re-import that, that wallet. Now, one thing you should know is that regardless of the additional securities you can add to your wallet, anybody in possession of your secret words, so your mnemonic phrase or your seed phrase, will be able to duplicate your wallet and empty it. You'll be looking at it and you'll be seeing them basically taking all the money out in front of your very own eyes. Ideally, the 12 words should be kept offline at all times written on a piece of paper and laminated so you know it doesn't get damaged by water. Or you could also engrave it, some people do that, on a metal sheet and then duplicate and keep in two different secret places. Now, I know a lot of people nowadays have so many different um, wallets and so many different accounts that the use of mnemonic words and the digital storage option becomes like a must for them. Although <clears throat> this is not the most recommended solution to keep your uh, mnemonic phrase, in the case you choose an application, if you choose to store it online, like on your computer or on your electronic device or something, make sure to choose an application that encrypts your data. And in addition, use a master password to protect the application on your device. The, the, our devices nowadays anyway come with additional security on them, like uh, your biometrics. It could be your fingerprint, it could be your face. Always turn that on. 
that will save you. Because in order for the hacker to do some stuff on your account, they'll need to either cut your head or your hand so that they can have either your face or your finger. Vulnerability number two, fake support links. We all are in various projects and those projects usually have WhatsApp group, Telegram group, Discord groups. We all join those groups, but guess what? So do hackers. They join those groups as well because they know that as soon as you will find an issue, instead of being an entrepreneur and look for the solution yourself, you will go back to the group and you will post your question, you will ask for help. And when you do that, support will never contact you directly, just so you know. They may post something and ask you to contact them. Anybody who contacts you is definitely not support. So when you call for, for help on those groups, you draw them towards yourself and then they will private message you offering support. They'll, you know, impersonate the support team. They'll tell you they are the support. They'll send you a link. They'll, you know, they'll ask you all kinds of things. They'll ask you if you've um, uh, got your rewards already or if you got your giveaway already. And then they'll tell you, oh, uh, you know, in order to, to do what you're trying to do, you need to click on this link. They'll send you a link. Support will never contact you first in the first place. So never click on any link from support because it's not support. And if you do this, you're installing a Trojan horse, which will copy all of your security information and send it to the hacker. So be aware. Vulnerability number three, avoid airdrops. We all love free stuff and hackers do know that. This vulnerability comes in the form of airdrops and giveaways. Airdrops are free tokens sometimes offered to make, you know, uh, by the creator or uh, founders of some of some token or cryptocurrencies, uh, you know, just to get people to, to, to just to make the crypto aware, right? Just to raise awareness, I should say, just to raise awareness on a new crypto. But because hackers know about airdrops, well, they, they would then send airdrops or actually fake airdrops. And people that are out there always looking for airdrops will get them and they will click on them in order to uh, deposit the airdrops into their wallet. Meanwhile, they're actually opening the door to the hackers. So hackers like to use them as bait. And we are, there is a lot of us who would actually bite. As a general rule, avoid airdrops in general. If you want a crypto, buy it while the price is still very, very low. For example, uh, you could buy it at the initial coin offering, which is the first time a coin or token is offered before it actually hits the market or the exchanges. Or if the price is already too high, be patient. Don't get yourself into FOMO, like fear of missing out. Wait, market always comes down. That's a guarantee. Price will come down at one point, then you jump in. It always happens. Vulnerability number four, greed. Actually, it's, uh, it's not written properly here. So it should be uh, EED. So greed and cupidity. Sometimes the pirate or the hacker does not need to even enter into our crypto wallet. We voluntarily send them our hard earned cryptos. So this vulnerability comes in the form of an official communication from a public personality. For example, uh, the CEO of Binance, CZ, or Vitalik from Ethereum, or Elon Musk from Tesla, or Michael Saylor from MicroStrategy. And what the hacker will do, they'll basically play a recorded video and make it look like, you know, make it look like it is live. And then on the top or the bottom of that video, they'll put a fake 
tweet message. So put a fake tweet message that apparently is supposed to be coming from the person that is speaking, the celebrity that is speaking, and offering you to double or triple whatever crypto you send to them. And then they'll have a link that if you click, it will show you the different packages with addresses. And if you click that and you send your crypto to them, then just say bye-bye to those cryptos. Because if you actually go back to the Twitter uh, account of that person that is supposed to be speaking and offering that, you'll realize that they don't actually have that specific message on their Twitter account, right? But how many of us are going to go actually back and check it? Not many. So do not send your crypto to anyone. Those are hackers. Vulnerability number five, your wallet connection with crypto exchanges. We all have wallets that are connected to different crypto exchanges. A good example is either PancakeSwap or Uniswap or even uh, SushiSwap using either Trust Wallet or uh, MetaMask. So we use those for different re reasons, right? It could be for um, it could be for liquidity pool staking or uh, yield farming or all kind of things. So make sure to begin with that you are on the right platform, because hackers tend to recreate the same user interface of a website. And then you you know they send you the wrong link. Sometimes they would just miss one 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 letter in the name. And then because you know we tend to read without actually reading every single letter, we might miss that that is actually a fake link. And if you do that, guess what you're doing? You're actually basically uploading your funds into the wrong website, right? So it's called phishing. And if you actually look here on this picture, you will see here phishing warning and pancake swap is basically telling us to make sure we're on https dot forward slash forward slash pancake swap dot finance. You always should check the URL very, very carefully. So, and at the end, you see how here, for example, it reads connect wallet. That is because my wallet is disconnected. So, at the end, you should always click in this area here in order to disconnect your wallet, be it Trust Wallet or MetaMask from PancakeSwap.Finance. You should never, and I know a lot of people tend to do that, you should never leave your wallet connected to those sites. So the connection could be exploited by hackers to empty or take control of your wallet. And everything I said here for PancakeSwap is also valid for MetaMask. Now, vulnerability number six, it's actually not a vulnerability. It is a security. It is something that a lot of people tend not to do, right? They, as soon as they download a wallet, they don't go in the settings to see what's in there. You should actually go into the settings and, 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 and start looking around when you get a you know one of these things take the time to look around you're not going to break anything before you actually even put your money on there go in there play around check things learn about things many have embraced the blockchain technology and crypto world without actually taking care of the basics and all the risks that are involved each wallet has the security settings that we should all enable so if you look at the first picture here, I'm already basically in the settings on Trust Wallet. And if you look, the third one is actually security tab. So if you click on this security tab, it will open up this other window. You see here that you have the possibility to add an additional passcode for when you open up your wallet, an additional one. So once you're in there, each time you go in there, it will ask you for that auto lock, meaning that if you navigate away from this page, the next time you come back, you need to enter your code. You have the option to put it that it is immediate or wait five seconds, 10 seconds, an hour before it asks for the code again. No, put it down as immediate, all right, immediate. Lock method, 
passcode biometric. So that means it could either use a passcode or your biometric. So if you have a recent phone and that phone allows fingerprint or face, then uh, enable that. When you put passcode or biometric, it would either have your passcode before it can open up the thing, or it would use your biometric before it can open up your account. So it's important to have both because you could find yourself in, uh, you know, in a location where you can actually, uh, if, it, if, if it is the face, you cannot take your mask down to get a good face scan. And then transaction signing. So this basically you need to enable it to make sure before each transaction, it's asking for the code. This way, you know that even if they get access to your thing, to your, to your wallet, they're not going to be able to uh, transfer the money out. Add all the additional security needed, and trust me, you will not regret it. Now, let us quickly go through this phishing attempt that I was victim of uh, while I was creating this presentation. So it was on, uh, when was it? It was on February the 5th. So I am on this project here and uh, I needed some information. This is basically um, DT Socialize, all right? And their metaverse. I was setting up my uh, metaverse for DT Socialize. If you know DT Socialize or you share, you can Google it. Um, so basically this is the initial message. It was actually, sorry, February the 7th. This is the message I sent in the morning. Hello, you meta worlder. My Android is not letting me install you Meta World, even though I already allowed unknown applications. Any idea how to solve this using a Note 21? Thanks in advance. So an hour and about an hour and a half ago, uh, sorry, an hour and a half later, this person here with the name of Wesk9989 contacted me. Hello, I am admin from you Meta World official so do you need any assistance with the use with with any issue concerning you meta wallet i asked for you meta world so he's aiming at my wallet as you can see already i said hi i only need assistance with you know to install you meta world on my phone so oh okay good but first you have to register and receive your bonus reward so now he's adding more bait in order for me to buy. I told him, I don't need the rewards. I said, okay, what wallet do you use? He's very focused on my wallet. MetaMask, I, I answered. I got no problem with my wallet, only trying to install you Meta World. I already know at this point that he's a thief, that he's a hacker, but you know, I wanna take this all the way to the end. So I give him a chance to back off. Then he would say, oh, you won't be able to install UMetal World for now. You will need to go through the validation process to enable to install. And I said, which is what? I will send you the validation link to validate your wallet, okay? So basically this is where, so the same page here shows the same thing. So I'll send you the validation link to validate your wallet, okay? And then I started laughing and then guess what? He basically disconnected and I could not send him any message afterward. So this is a good example. And it doesn't matter what public group you are on. Whenever you will go on there, you can try it out if you want, just for fun, but do not let them send you any link because even by accident, you could end up clicking that link. So post and ask for help. And you will see how somebody, at least one person, after some time will contact you and try to send you their link because there are as many of those hackers on, in the public groups that we're on that you cannot even imagine, all right? So I hope this tips, uh, these tips, I should say, uh, or I hope the tips shared in this presentation will help you protect your wallets and keep your crypto and NFT away from scammers and hackers. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Bye-bye.